Those who arrive in compact cars are often considered budget-conscious customers. On my mother's 60th birthday, I wanted to make it special by taking her and my daughter to a renowned upscale restaurant that is notoriously difficult to book. However, our evening took an unexpected turn. The restaurant manager began making derogatory remarks, mocking us and insinuating that we were out of place. My mother, clearly upset, suggested we leave. But the manager just smirked. To our surprise, the other diners stood up in unison, glaring at the manager in disapproval. I'm Rebecca Miller, 28 years old, a single mother with a three-year-old daughter. After separating from my husband due to differing values, I decided to raise my daughter alone. When I returned home to share the news, my mother welcomed us with open arms. Overwhelmed, I broke down in tears. Seeing my distress, my mother offered for us to move in with her. She had been living alone since my father passed away a few years ago, and she was delighted at the idea of having us. With my mother's 60th birthday approaching, I wanted to do something extraordinary. I managed to secure a reservation at the coveted restaurant, known for being booked years in advance. I was prepared for a long wait, but a cancellation allowed us to get a reservation for her birthday month. My mother was thrilled when I told her her reaction made all the effort worthwhile. The day of the reservation arrived, and I drove my mother and daughter to the restaurant, never anticipating any problems. Miss Rebecca Miller, is it? Please come this way, said the host. The grand entrance was fitting for such an exclusive venue, and my mother and I were in awe of the opulent decor while my daughter remained her usual cheerful self. Seeing my mother's delight, I felt confident that the evening would be perfect. After a brief wait, our appetizer arrived, a beautifully presented salad. Both my mother and I were excited, especially since the restaurant had a special menu for my daughter, a thoughtful touch. As we enjoyed our meal, my mother began recognizing some of the patrons. I know that person, she said, pointing out several celebrities she had seen on TV. I glanced around, noticing the same faces and feeling a part of this glamorous world. Everyone seemed to be enjoying my mother's and daughter's presence and the approving looks from fellow diners reassured me about bringing my young child. The appetizers were finished and the first main course was served, its elegant presentation adding to the evening's splendor. Instinctively, I pulled out my phone and took a photo. Almost immediately, a different staff member approached us. His displeased expression caught me off guard. Excuse me, could you please refrain from taking photos? He asked curtly. I apologized, trying to explain. I just wanted to capture the moment. His next words were laced with disdain. This is typical of people like you. Why are you even here? Who let you in? His muttered comment was clearly audible making me feel deeply uncomfortable. I tried to hide my discomfort, looking down to avoid dampening my mother's mood. However, my daughter's sudden crying brought me back to the moment. She had dropped her bread on the floor, and her cries echoed in the quiet restaurant. People began to turn their attention toward us, and I panicked, attempting to calm her down, but the more frantic I became, the less effective my efforts were. The rude staff member from earlier approached again. Ma'am, you're disturbing the other patrons with all this noise. I'm so sorry, I said. I'll calm her down right away. You really shouldn't bring children to places like this, he retorted, his sarcasm unmistakable. My mother overheard this time. Clearly irritated, my mother spoke softly but firmly. It's your attitude that's truly ruining the reputation of this establishment. Her comment only seemed to fuel his hostility. This isn't a place for children, you know. If you continue to cause a scene, I might have to call security. His arrogance and rudeness made both my mother and me furious, but we knew that reacting with anger would only worsen the situation. Taking a deep breath, I tried to stay composed, determined not to let him see how deeply his behavior had affected us. I could hear my mother murmuring a similar apology. I truly apologize for the disturbance. My daughter has stopped crying. Can we have a moment? The staff member, arms crossed, stared at us, clearly waiting for us to make the next move. Could you calm down? You're inconveniencing the other guests, he said sharply. To distract my daughter, I offered her some bread from my plate. She stopped crying and began eating happily. I let out a sigh of relief, shared a glance with my mom, and attempted another apology to the staff member before taking my seat. But he seemed even more agitated. Do you even understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you to leave. This restaurant is too upscale for you. 
But my daughter has calmed down now, I protested. She might cry again. But we informed the restaurant about her when we made the reservation. So what? He snapped. This is exactly why people like you have such low standards. If you keep this up, I'll call the manager. The staff members stormed off towards the staff room, leaving my mother and me stunned. We couldn't believe how rude he was. Didn't he realize that his attitude was the real issue here? Despite it being a special celebration for my mother's 60th birthday, the experience was sard. Although I had caused the scene, I didn't want to escalate the situation further. As we considered our next steps, we exchanged worried looks and soon the staff member returned with a man who appeared to be the manager. I couldn't help but gasp when I saw the manager. It was Daniel Thompson, a classmate from middle school. Is that you, Rebecca? Daniel recognized me instantly. The staff member, surprised, asked Daniel, Do you know her? A wave of relief washed over me. Daniel had always been earnest and cheerful in school, although he was a bit reserved and usually hung out with a smaller circle compared to my diverse group. I remembered him primarily because he had once confessed his feelings for me. At the time, I was in a relationship, so I had declined. Despite that, we'd still kept in touch a few times. I hoped that Daniel might address the staff member's rude behavior, but instead, he greeted me with a disheartening comment. Oh, Rebecca, I didn't expect to see you here. Are you sure you belong in a place like this? What do you mean? I asked, puzzled. I heard the rumor. Daniel said, his tone dismissive. You're a single mom now, right? People say single moms are usually struggling financially. This is a high-end restaurant. It would be a problem if you couldn't pay later. Daniel's mocking smile and unrestrained scrutiny were shocking. I remember him as a kind person back in school, but he seemed to have changed significantly. How can you say that? I retorted. I made a reservation and paid in advance. You've always been so headstrong, Daniel said with a smirk. Maybe that's why your husband left you. You need to know how to flatter people sometimes. What does that have to do with anything? I asked, bewildered. Daniel continued, his disdain evident. Isn't that your compact car outside? So what if it is? I replied, my irritation growing. Daniel chuckled derisively. People who drive compact cars don't belong here. Didn't you notice when you parked? No one else drives a compact car. Everyone else has a Mercedes or something similar. Aren't you embarrassed to be so out of place? His contempt was palpable. It was as if the Daniel I once knew was long gone. He assessed us with disdain and said, You look downright poor. You clearly don't fit in here. If you understand the staff's concerns, why don't you just leave? I felt my irritation rise as I was treated like we were causing trouble and refusing to leave. We had made a reservation and paid in advance. We had every right to dine there. I couldn't believe that Daniel, who used to be so kind, would now judge people based on their appearance. After everything he said, there was no reason for my mother and me to stay. The food might have been excellent, but we didn't want to be associated with a restaurant that had such disrespectful staff and a manager who had clearly changed. Daniel, you've really changed. If this is how it's going to be, we're leaving, I said firmly. He seemed oddly satisfied. I'm living the dream now, he said with a smirk. I'm definitely better off than you. Don't think you can just call me by my first name. It's a shame how much you've changed, I replied. Daniel's smirk widened. That's because you rejected me back then. Even though you're not that pretty, I'm happier now. Isn't it refreshing? He cheerfully high-fived a nearby staff member, and they both laughed. It was clear that Daniel still held a grudge from all those years ago, understanding that made his awful attitude a little more comprehensible to me. Say whatever you want, I said. I'm certainly happier than someone who still harbors a grudge from the past. I have a wonderful daughter and a caring mother. Turning to my mom, I added, let's go. When I responded confidently, Daniel seemed to take pleasure in my irritation. He probably thought I was just being a sore loser. It frustrated me to no end, but shouting at him wouldn't change anything. I never imagined that a classmate could become so different. This day was supposed to end on a high note, but with these thoughts weighing on me, I picked up my daughter and glanced at my mom. She was clearly enraged and abruptly stood up. You've made a mockery of my daughter. We don't want anything to do with a place like this. As you said, we're leaving, she declared loudly. Her words reverberated throughout the restaurant, and to her surprise, all the diners who had been enjoying their meals began to stand up and prepare to leave. I was stunned, unable to grasp what was happening. Wait, what's going on? I called out, bewildered. 
I'm sorry for the disturbance. We'll handle these rude customers right away, Dima said, trying desperately to prevent the diners from leaving. But his efforts were met with cold stares from every direction. Daniel was visibly flustered, not understanding the sudden turn of events. Two elderly men approached Daniel, shouting, How dare you treat Mrs. Miller like that? We've been loyal customers for years but will never return. Following the lead of the two men, the other diners began to voice their discontent and scold Daniel. They expressed their gratitude to my mother, who was still holding my daughter. It was clear that Daniel's behavior had backfired spectacularly. The entire restaurant was now united in their support of us. I stood there, wide-eyed, observing the extraordinary scene unfolding before me. The people who were reprimanding Daniel were recognizable celebrities, politicians, and other visibly affluent individuals. I had no idea why they seemed to feel a sense of loyalty to my mother. What's going on here? I wondered aloud, confused. Daniel's face turned ashen as he tried desperately to calm everyone down. The staff member beside him also appeared to be losing color. I looked at my mom with a puzzled expression, and she revealed an astonishing truth. All these people used to be regular customers of mine when I was a traditional sweets maker. What? I was as shocked as Daniel. I knew my mom had been a sweets maker, but I had no idea she had catered to such high-profile clients. One of the celebrities nearby spoke up. Mrs. Miller's sweets were the best in the country. My mom blushed at the compliment and replied modestly, I may not be a professional craftsman anymore, but thanks to all of you, I became quite skilled. I'm truly grateful. In that sense, a customer is indeed a god. Hearing this, I felt a profound admiration for my mother. Daniel looked completely stunned, holding his breath and visibly tense. My mom approached the astonished Daniel and said calmly, You need to learn to cherish your customers. This restaurant is important to you, isn't it? At her words, Daniel's frustration boiled over, and he growled in response. Daniel was clearly on the defensive, trying to maintain a facade of confidence despite the situation. Hey, stop this. What's with the customer is God nonsense? That's an outdated way of thinking and isn't popular anymore. His frustrated shout, which could be interpreted as a cry of anguish, reverberated through the room. My mom remained unperturbed by his outburst. You think caring for the customer is just a fleeting trend? She asked calmly. Daniel struggled to respond, clearly intimidated by my mother's firm stance. Still, he stubbornly refused to accept her perspective. We're the ones providing the food, he argued. We're more important than the customers. This is absurd. I am important. If your daughter Rebecca hadn't rejected me, I wouldn't have treated you this way. Apologize to me right now, and maybe I'll consider making Rebecca my partner. It could be a way out of your struggling life, don't you think? He directed this last part at me, and I was utterly repulsed. I sighed deeply and said, I'm sorry, but honestly, I can't deal with you right now. As I dismissed him and lowered my head, chuckles erupted from the crowd. Daniel's face flushed bright red. Despite how clear my response was, Daniel, with his misplaced confidence, seemed to be unprepared for another rejection. Why not? Have money, you know. You don't want to be looked down upon, do you? And isn't it embarrassing to be a single mother? Women like you probably can't remarry, so I'm offering to take you. It's none of your business, I said firmly. Just because you have money doesn't guarantee happiness. I brushed him off, and his face turned even redder. I couldn't help but wonder if money was behind Daniel's transformation. They say that money can lead to one's downfall, but seeing it firsthand was a new experience for me. How dare a single mother let you talk back to me? Daniel's words no longer had any impact. In fact, after hearing my mother's dignified response, Daniel seemed pitiful. Suddenly, a loud voice boomed from the back of the restaurant, startling everyone. We all turned to find the source. A middle-aged man appeared, and Daniel's expression instantly shifted to one of unease. Daniel, what on earth is going on here? The man demanded. Why is Dad here? Daniel stammered. I heard Mrs. Miller and her family were dining here, so I came to greet them, his father said, surveying the commotion. What's with all this noise? It became clear that the man was Daniel's father. I hadn't seen him since middle school, but he appeared very stern and dignified. Earlier, one of the staff had mentioned something about the boss, so it seemed this man must be the restaurant's owner. Gave you the manager position after hearing you lost your job, but the business has only been declining. Now I understand why, his father said, 
disappointment evident. What? Daniel gasped. Yes, I arrived a bit earlier, his father continued. I overheard the commotion and saw you insulting Mrs. Miller's family. With all the arrogant things you've been saying, do you even realize how wonderful a person Mrs. Miller is? As the boss interrogated him, Daniel's face grew pale, and he began to sweat profusely. What? This old hag is supposed to be someone special? Daniel sneered. Watch your mouth, his father snapped back. Mrs. Miller helped fund the opening of this restaurant. What? This old lady has that kind of money. Daniel scoffed. Of course, his father replied sharply. Mrs. Miller's husband owned a famous traditional candy store, and she herself worked tirelessly in the demanding world of candy making. She's experienced far more in life than you ever will. I wish I could distill her wisdom and let you experience just a fraction of it. With that, the owner turned to face us. I'm deeply sorry for the trouble my foolish son has caused. Daniel, apologize now. Why should I? Daniel protested. I'm the manager of this upscale restaurant. Didn't you trust my abilities enough to leave me in charge? This is my place, and I make the rules. Enough with your arrogance, the owner cut him off. What have I done, making someone like you the manager? I'm so disappointed in you. You're never setting foot in this place again. What? Dana's jaw dropped in shock. In a panic, he started apologizing to his father, but the owner's decision was resolute. You're apologizing to the wrong person, his father said firmly. You should be apologizing to Mrs. Miller and her family. Please, I'm so sorry, Daniel begged. I finally made it, and I don't want to lose it all over something like this. Still going on about that. The owner shook his head in disbelief. His face was a picture of shock. No one would want to discover their child was so arrogant and disrespectful. If my own daughter had acted this way, I would have made the same decision as the owner. We all glared at Daniel, who was now visibly distressed. The owner began to recount how Daniel had ended up working at the restaurant. Daniel used to work at a renowned hotel, he explained, but he racked up massive debts from gambling. The chaos caused by debt collectors led to this firing. Lost and desperate, Daniel returned home and begged me for a job. At the time, I had been offered a promotion to CEO of the company. The story painted a clear picture of Daniel's downfall and reinforced the gravity of his behavior. So, Daniel's father decided to leave the upscale restaurant to his son and manage several other establishments in the same chain. At first, Daniel worked diligently, and the owner felt reassured. However, sales at Daniel's restaurant soon began to plummet. The owner had been trying to understand the cause of the decline for some time. Complaints about Daniel's poor attitude from the staff kept surfacing, but without concrete evidence, he wanted to believe in his son's abilities. Today, his hope had turned to certainty. It's truly a shame, the owner said, looking at Daniel with deep disappointment. Daniel, who looked as though he had been struck by lightning, began to apologize frantically. Dad, please forgive me. I've been trying my best, haven't I? Rebecca, please say something to my dad for me. What exactly should I say? I asked, my voice cold. We were classmates, remember? For old time's sake. You're really something, I continued. You truly are the worst. Daniel's face fell further as he absorbed the disdain in my words. Both my mother and I sighed, taken aback by the turn of events. After the confrontation, Daniel was dismissed from his position as manager and disowned by his father, leaving him without a place to go. It later came to light that Daniel had accumulated new, hidden debts. Despite his decent salary, he had squandered most of it on gambling and mistreated his staff daily. He had a particular favorite among the staff, one who was also a former college junior of Daniel's, this staff member, who had a problematic attitude, was hired on Daniel's orders. Eventually, he was dismissed along with Daniel. With everything lost, Daniel sank further into gambling to escape his troubles, struggling to pay off his debts. His actions had not only ruined my mother's 60th birthday celebration but also showcased his lack of integrity. To make amends, Daniel's father arranged a party for us at a hotel he owned, offering a free room as an apology. At the party, I made many new friends and realized just how much people cherish my mother. Everyone there had known her from her days as a traditional sweets maker, coming to her shop to buy her confections as gifts. Her enduring connections were a testament to her charm and kindness. I hope to follow in her footsteps and become the kind of mother my daughter looks up to with the same admiration.